Ever seen those red light masks promising wrinkle-free, youthful skin and wondered if they're just overpriced gimmicks? Well, I was skeptical too until diving into the research and uncovering some surprising evidence that's made me take a second look. So does that mean that I'm now ready to recommend them? Well, it's complicated. We need to have a look at what the current research says and ask some really tough questions, like how big is the effect and is this truly the best way to approach skin rejuvenation? In this video, I'll walk you through the evidence that we have and what you need to know before spending hundreds or even thousands of dollars on one of these masks. And then I'll explain my personal approach to this emerging technology. And if you want weekly health research summaries and health strategies that I share with my patients, sign up using the link in the pinned comment. The first use of light therapy for skin was to treat an infection called lupus. A Danish doctor won a Nobel Prize in 1903 for his pioneering work in the area. He found that using ultraviolet and red light significantly improved healing. In the middle of the 20th century, lasers started to be used for skin treatments. The powerful concentrated light from lasers can have a dramatic impact on fine lines and wrinkles, but the aggressive action comes with an extended recovery time and potential side effects. That Danish doctor's early work suggested that there might be a way to harness the healing power of light in a gentler form. Here's the challenge though, it's been known for a long time that certain specific wavelengths of light can have greater effects on the cells in our skin than others. That's one of the key benefits of lasers. And you probably already know that ordinary light contains the whole spectrum of wavelengths. You can see them in a rainbow for instance. Lasers are different, they emit light in a specific narrow band. They can give us pure blue or pure red light for instance, but they're relatively expensive, complex and often more powerful than we need. A solution came in the form of new light technology. NASA was at the forefront of creating novel light sources that, like lasers, could produce light in a relatively narrow spectrum. But they ended up being much simpler, cheaper and gentler. We now use this technology, LEDs, everywhere. LEDs can produce red light and near-infrared light. These wavelengths are particularly significant when it comes to therapies for the skin. But why is this? What does red light actually do? Well, research has shown that it's capable of several powerful effects. For one thing, red light is absorbed by the mitochondria, which are the powerhouses of our cells. It stimulates more energy production and enhanced cellular activity. Red light also combats inflammation and moreover, it stimulates fibroblasts. These are specialized cells in the skin responsible for making collagen and elastin, two crucial components that give the skin structure. As we age, collagen and elastin, they decrease, and this is one of the primary drivers of wrinkles and sagging skin. Red light can boost the production of both, and we do have clinical evidence that red light therapy stimulates important changes in the skin related to healing and rejuvenation. Red light therapy using LEDs also has has some big advantages over laser therapy. There's no downtime, no damage to the skin, and the equipment needed is much less expensive. For these reasons, it makes sense that there'd be a lot of interest in red light therapy for treating various skin problems, including the effects of aging. So what evidence do we presently have for its effectiveness in these areas? Well, let's take a look. One of the early areas of interest for red light therapy was wound healing. It's been widely studied and red light therapy has been found to be effective. As we noted above, the mechanisms have to do with stimulating enhanced cellular activity and suppressing inflammation. This led to the application of red light therapy for treating acne, and there are some initial promising results. For instance, one clinical trial looked at the effects of 15-minute treatments of red light therapy over the course of eight weeks. It was a split-phase trial where the treatment was applied to just one side of the face. At the end of the eight weeks, the treatment resulted in about a 50% reduction in acne lesions. But this area is still relatively new. There's still a lot of uncertainty about which wavelengths of light are most helpful. Many studies have also looked at blue light, for instance. At this point, it seems that the effects are real, but moderate. But what about the use of red light for countering the effects of aging? Well, an early study came out in 2005, and at that time, using LEDs was quite a novel approach. It allowed researchers to examine the impact using a narrow wavelength of light without heat and the associated damage caused by the lasers. They looked at 90 patients who received eight treatments of amber light over four weeks. The results were encouraging. 90% of those studied had a reduction in the signs of photoaging. This included smoother skin textures, a reduction in wrinkles around the eyes, and a more even skin coloration. 
and the researchers also examined skin samples from these patients. It showed significant increases in collagen production. But this raised an important question. Was the amber the right colour of light, or would there be something even more effective? Another study set out to test two other wavelengths, red and near-infrared. It was a randomised controlled trial and double-blinded. The 76 patients with facial wrinkles were treated on one side of the face two times for a week over a four-week period. The result showed significant reductions in wrinkles with both wavelengths, up to 36%, and increases in skin elasticity of 19%. As with the previous study, treatment produced a marked increase in collagen and elastin, so there's evidence that amber, red and near-infrared light can reduce the signs of photoaging. But is there a clear winner? Let's look at one additional study that compared amber light to red light for wrinkles around the eyes. It was published in 2023, and it was again a split-face trial that included 137 women. They got 10 sessions of amber and red light for 4 weeks, and they used one colour on the right side of the face and the other colour on the left. Wrinkle reduction with red light was 31.6%, and with amber it was 29.9%. In other words, the effects were roughly the same, and we don't have a huge number of trials testing red light therapy for aging at this point, but the results from the small trials that we have so far are positive, and importantly, the approach is safe. One meta-analysis of existing trials found that there's been no reported side effects. And it's the safety profile of LED red light therapy that's a key reason for why we now see so many of these devices on the market. If you look on Amazon, you'll find a ton of red light masks that claim to dramatically improve your skin. But red light therapy using high quality equipment in clinical trials is one thing. Can we get similar results for an at-home device? Well, let's take a look and then I'll tell you about how I'm approaching it. One recent study looked at an LED mask that had red light and near-infrared light. The study is a bit unusual since it included only men. Their skin was examined using digital photography and computer analysis after six weeks of treatment. The researchers concluded that there were improvements in skin wrinkles and skin tone. Another study published just last year investigated the effects of a consumer-grade LED mask. They again found significant improvements in elasticity, sagging and wrinkles across all six areas of the face. These studies are intriguing, but there are some issues that we need to consider. First, at this point, we don't have much data. These devices are relatively new and few studies have been done so far. Second, these two studies that we've looked at both involve researchers who are connected to the companies selling these types of devices. So this doesn't necessarily mean that the results are biased, but there is a clear risk of this. Third, we're nowhere near to a consensus about treatment specifics. There are so many moving parts here. So for example, which wavelengths should we use? How long should a treatment session last? How often should we do them? How strong do the lights need to be, etc. We don't have clear answers to any of these questions. Devices from different manufacturers differ in a lot of ways, and right now we don't have solid evidence for a best way to choose between them. So with all of this uncertainty, it's worth asking, how does red light therapy to treat skin aging compare to other available therapies? And then I'll go through my approach to red light masks. Well, there's one approach to maintaining and recovering youthful, healthy skin that's both powerful and cheap. It's got two elements. The first is sunscreen. This is fundamental. Damage due to the sun's UV rays is the number one contributor to aging to our skin. And I tell my patients to always use a sunscreen with SPF 50 or higher. And personally, I use sunscreen daily and I minimize sun exposure in the middle of the day. This ensures that I'm not damaging my skin and not accelerating the aging process. The second element I have in mind here is using topical retinoids. So think of retinoids like personal trainers for your skin cells. Just like a trainer helps you get stronger, retinoids push your skin cells to work harder, helping them renew and make more collagen. Retinoids also help strengthen the skin's protective barrier, reducing water loss and stopping enzymes that break down the skin support structures. One of the most widely studied is tretinoin. Plenty of research has shown its effectiveness. One massive meta-analysis, for example, looked at 180 individual studies on tretinoin. It found that topical use helped improve the science of photoaging in terms of wrinkles, uneven coloration, and age spots in as little as one month of use. But how significant can the improvements be? Well, one case study involved these two images of a 66-year-old woman, the first showing the appearance of her skin before treatment, and the second showing how it looked after three months of using tretinoin, and the difference is striking. There's another approach that we can use to add to the effects that we get from sunscreen and topical retinoids. So we've already talked about the importance of collagen, and supplementing with collagen peptides, which are a form of broken down collagen, helps to stimulate our body's own collagen production in our skin, and this in turn helps with wrinkles. 
Several studies have backed up the impact. For instance, this study published in February 2024 looked at wrinkles, elasticity and hydration. They measured participants at the 4, 8 and 12 week mark. Those taking collagen peptides experienced significant improvements in wrinkle size, elasticity and hydration. Personally, I incorporate collagen peptides into my supplement stack, and I've recently released a new form of microvitamin called Microvitamin Plus Powder. It contains 12.5 grams of collagen peptides, but just because I take a supplement does in no way mean that you should as well. Finally, there are also more traditional light-based approaches to skin rejuvenation. These include a variety of laser technologies, and as we've discussed above, these can produce significant changes. But they are expensive and require a period of recovery. So let's compare these strategies for treating the signs of skin aging. We have well-established approaches like sunscreen plus topical retinoids that are effective, safe and cheap. Then there are supplements like collagen peptides that give modest benefits but are also inexpensive and safe. Traditional laser-based therapies are regarded as the gold standard for skin rejuvenation. It has the strongest effects but it is quite expensive. And that brings us onto red light therapy masks. Where do they fit? Well they've got a strong safety profile which is a huge plus and as far as pricing they're a lot cheaper than lasers but more expensive than other strategies that we've discussed. In terms of effectiveness we've got some promising data but we need more studies. So here's the approach I'm personally taking. I'm intrigued by the ability to use treatment at home for relatively small costs and the safety profile. Unlike some treatments, there's really no risk here, so I've decided to buy a few models and test them over the coming months, and I'll be keeping an eye out for any key changes that I see in my skin. And I'll also be paying attention to how easy they are to use, and I'll share my experiences in an upcoming video, so if you're not already a channel subscriber, consider subscribing so that you don't miss it. We've been talking about countering the signs of aging for our skin, but what if we could slow down aging from the inside for our whole body and potentially add years to our life? Well that's the promise of a mysterious blue supplement that RFK Jr was spotted adding to his drink, but does it actually work? So make sure to check out this next video here to get the full story.